I was going to say, you haven't hit the recall button yet. There we go. Okay, so um, for anyone who has just been joining us and uh, for those of you who will be watching the replay afterwards, we wanted to give you an extremely warm welcome to today's webinar. Um, this is a practical and creative guide to hosting an online summer concert. And... Um, this is, uh, we've just been finding out um, a little bit about what everyone um, normally does. It's like a lot of you who are listening to the live call today, you are actively um, doing summer concerts normally. And um, it's now the challenge this year is if you wanted to do something that we have to do it online. Now, I don't know about anyone else, but I think we are all starting to settle into a little bit of a groove with the online lessons. So um, if you're here today, I'm guessing you're feeling adventurous enough to give it a whirl in, um, in, in the setting of uh, a summer, summer concert. So we're going to be looking at the practicalities first of all, and then we're going to be looking at the creative side. So we're going to be um, giving you a few ideas uh, in terms of how to set it up. Um, the different sort of platform options um, that you have in terms of Zoom um, and, and, and the likes. And then the pros and cons of live um, or recorded. Um, also creative ideas, how you can actually make a summer concert or even a summer party, whatever you want to call it, go with a swing. Um, and then we've got a couple of other ideas that we are going to be sharing um, towards the end of today's webinar. So that is the way we're going to roll with this today. And I'm now going to hand over to Sally um, and we are going to get started on the practicalities. Just before we do that though, I do want to say Hannah is going to be picking up your questions. So if you have questions as we go along, please type them into the chat box. Every so often we are going to be coming back in and we're going to be, I'm not going to say we're going to have all the answers to your questions, but we will certainly um, put them out there and we will obviously see people on the call today. So let's see how far through we can get with this summer concert planning today. Okay, Sally, over Absolutely. to you. Okay, Sorry. Talking to somebody who was doing an interview with for a podcast, and I was talking about you know how together actually we can solve things. The mm -hmm. collective brain, if you like, is often stronger and bigger um, if we pool and share our ideas. So as Sharon said, we don't necessarily have all the solutions and all the answers, um, but probably amongst us all, we can we can really be positive and find a way forward because it is a big undertaking. And as somebody said, is can you get the technology to work? So let's look at some of these practicalities. And I think the first thing for you to do is think about when you're going to have this. Now, I haven't quite decided when mine's going to pad two or three already, just, just small pop-up ones. I mean, I only have a small studio. And that's been quite easy because people have been in lockdown, so it hasn't been a problem to find a time when you make. I think as we move forward, certainly in the UK, we've got some students now going back to school and there's going to be a whole mishmash of, of times that people can make. So that will be a um, something that you'll need to be thinking about and, and maybe even do a poll amongst your parents to see what are the common times that you can do. You know, that might be one way of going about it. Um, decide on times decide your availability and then send that out to parents to see what whether there is a consensus you might not be able to get everybody there but you might even then decide to have more than one and i'm going to talk about that in a little bit of time um, so decide on the day decide on the time now this is an interesting one this is what time to have the concert because we know that online um, the signal can be variable um, I've got a bad connection seemingly. I'm not aware of it from my side. Can you hear me? I can hear you. It's breaking. My signal is really good, isn't it? It's it's breaking up a little bit. Um, if I'm just seeing who's commented there, that's Maggie. Um, maybe just let um, let us know. Is it is it everyone or is it just 
Is it just Sally? If you can, if you can even hear her, um, I know it's it's annoying when speech is out of sync <laughs> with the video. Okay. Yeah, and again, just like just bang on cue, me. Sally. You know, this is exactly the sort of thing because I know that we had it's our birthday, curious birthday last week, and um, we hosted three parties on Friday, and of course, when it came to um, seven o'clock in the evening, I hit the record and. I should have remembered that my connection is incredibly poor in the evening. So Sally, I love the point that you've just made there because I do think that um, mm. there are certain times of the day when each of our internet will struggle, um, when neighbours will be using it for certain different things. So I think that's a, a really good point to, to be picking up on in terms of um, setting up an online party because I'm sure many of you are very well versed with the frustration you know how deeply frustrating it is when you have just like one student on the other end of the call and it's just the internet connection is not having any of it so um yeah okay sally okay yeah yeah that that's interesting because i have just changed now to tether to my ipad and oh. which of course as i'm not going anywhere it it just is um, completely full and I've only got nine days left but now it's just told me I've got an unstable connection for the first time so I'll go with my tethering and tell me it's, whether it's improved or not it's sounding a lot better so far so just it is okay it is okay. Yeah. yeah it is okay all right okay so we'll keep going and um, so as Sharon just said deciding on the day and time really quite important and then I think you've got to think about numbers I think the number of people or how long you want this concert to last for and my suggestion would be keep it short. Short and several is better than long and um, uh, uh, one because we fall off the perch. We all know that, you know, online it's hard to concentrate. So it's better to do um, several shorter concerts and by shorter I mean certainly no more than an hour and that's for everything including the playing, including any other creative activities that we're going to be talking about in a minute. So um, I've certainly, in my concerts so far, I've had probably nine or ten performances, um, mostly at the lower grade, so they're quite short, but some of them have played twice, and some at the higher grades, um, higher level as well. So I would say probably no more than 12 short performances in um in in a session um so keeping it really really short and then you can do other activities as you go through um, the next thing to decide is what your platform is going to be now a lot of us i know are using zoom and i think zoom still is for me my preferred platform for this sort of thing just because of the flexibility that it offers the, the, the fact that you can do um, reactions and emojis, and we'll talk about those again in a bit. Um, and that if you're using that in your teaching, then everybody's used to it and they're used to the sound and which, what to do. But everybody has got a different preference. And again, I think it depends um, on what part of the country you're in and what your internet is like generally. Um, and uh, I think some people are finding Skype is better then do it on Skype and you can set up a group within Skype and have everybody on that. I think a few people are using FaceTime um, or, for example, WhatsApp. Now, personally, and this is completely, and I'll ask Sharon and, and Hannah what they find in a minute, but personally, I, I'm not a great WhatsApp user. I have a small phone and trying to do WhatsApp stuff on that is is just frustrating for me personally and I find um, FaceTime a bit the same as well in that you can only have a certain size of screen and um, I don't find the picture is quite as sharp as it is on Zoom. Sharon what thoughts from you? Yeah yeah okay so for me I'm also a Zoom person um, <clears throat> you've mentioned other platforms and, and the other one actually that I'm thinking of is, is Google Geo and I used that um, for the very first time about a month ago. Um, there was a meeting hosted on it and I had to download the app on my phone 
And just like you were saying, Sally, the frustration of trying to see eight very tiny faces on it, it really wasn't working for me. Now, what I am on currently is um, I have a MacBook. Um, so I do find that that's my preference, you know, as opposed to using my Zoom on an iPad. Um, so again, desktop or, or laptop, just because there is, I just find it's nice to see something in bigger screens. And I know that some of you are actually beaming it um, via smart TVs. And I mean, that's, that's even better. Um, but yes, I do find, Sally, you've just been talking about the flexibility of Zoom. Um, now, I guess the one thing just to say is that if um, you are planning to host a, a summer concert or summer party for your students, and let's say you're on the, the free version of Zoom, it's obviously very important to realize that after 40 minutes, your call will disappear because that's all that's allowed whenever you have multiple people on a call. So if you have set up for a, you know, you're on the free version of Zoom, you have, um, you know, 10 students coming on and you have scheduled for um, an hour, then everyone's going to get cut off after, after 40 minutes. So that's just another little thing to take into consideration. But I like Sally, you've already covered that, the fact that short is better. And I'm just actually going to go back to um, Liz, who is with us and who's already said that she has seven concerts planned. Liz, it'd be really good to know, because I know you have um, uh, a big studio with other teachers teaching for you. It'd be really good to know roughly how many students um, you are, you're having per group. And I mean, are you keeping, are you mixing up the age groups or the, the levels? It'd be great just to have a little bit of, because I know that you've obviously Sounds like you've got this, this all set and organized, so it'd be great. And if anyone else has got any, you know, things that they're doing that you'd like to share, do feel free to hop into the chat and, and to share. But yeah, Zoom for me, um, and it's just because I like seeing faces a little bit bigger. Yeah. Okay, and Hannah, what about you? Um, well, I'm a, I prefer Zoom as well, for the reasons that you've said. I also think the original sound option on Zoom is fantastic, because if you have a nice, a nice mic, yeah. then you can take advantage of that. You can use its features, um, and it's great. Um, I know that um, schools that I work for have come up with some other solutions. They've done kind of pre-recorded um, performances, and they've live streamed through YouTube at a certain time. So, you're, I, you're reading my script here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's it's great. Go on, because yeah. tell tell us about YouTube and do you know much about live streaming through YouTube? Not a lot. Only that that the, that's what they've chosen to do for schools junior musical tea. And um, I know that the idea behind it was that even though it's a pre-recorded performance, that everyone would sit down with their cup of tea at the same time and enjoy it and then send yeah. photographs, yeah. a bit like we did for the Curious Birthday Party, mm. yeah. of people enjoying so, that collective experience together. Yeah, and that you can, through Facebook, if you have a Facebook group, for example, you can actually hold a watch party, which is that very idea, so that you have the videos uploaded into, either, I mean, it could be YouTube, or if you use Vimeo for this type of thing, then, um, you know, but you hold a watch party via the Facebook group, and Sharon and I experimented with this yesterday, didn't we? <laughs> and um, you you just all pile into this watch party and put your little comments there as you're watching a video, and you jockey up the videos um, as you as you go, you know, before the before the thing. So th this is the other thing that to consider really, besides all the different platforms. Once you've decided on that platform. Um, you then have to decide whether to go for live performances or whether you're actually going to go for recorded performances. And, you know, there are definitely pros and cons to each one. I don't think there's a right answer here. I think you do what is right for you, as we're finding so often with these things. So, you know, with the recorded performances, um, you know, the advantages are that hopefully it'll be a better quality of sound. You know, Hannah's just mentioned the, the microphone, and that's great for you, the teacher, but a lot of students don't invest at that level in the microphones and things like that. So we know that online their sound quality can be quite poor and quite patchy in the live situation. So definitely probably a better quality. Uh, the other advantage of doing a recorded performance is the students can practice. 
until they're happy with it. And we know that they can do it 10 or 12 times, you know. Well, that's all good because it's helping them to improve their, their, their playing, et cetera, et cetera. The problems with recording um, performances are actually it takes a lot more organisation from your end because you've got to send out the email to the parents, you've got to make sure that you have a platform that all the parents can upload to these videos from your end. You've then got to double check that all the videos are there and they are working. You've then got to sort out what order the videos are going to go in. Well, that in a way isn't any different from writing a program or anything like that. Um, but you've got to get them all in place and you've got to get them all organized. Um, so that would be recorded performances. Definitely one really um, valid option, I think. And the other one is the live performance, which is what I've done. I've done live performances all the way through. Um, so, you know, the, the, the advantages are that I think less organisation is needed. And it's, it's more real, I think. It, you know, the, the shoes are there. They have got to perform at that moment in time. And as we know, that brings sort of a, an additional kind of um, frisson, if you like, to, to that performance, even though the rest of us are listening at length it's definitely um adds adds something i think but of course there are disadvantages and many of which i have just mentioned so the streaming can be patchy and reduce the sound quality we can even you know have an interruption completely a complete failure of the of the signal um and so you know that as i say there are pros and cons for for each one um Sharon, have you got any thoughts about your preference? Yeah, well, I'm actually, I'm just going to go um, back here. I'm seeing Liz has, has hopped in. Um, and, and I'm actually just going to start with her last comment there. My worry about live performances is that people will leave after they play. Um, so the last performer has no audience. And I think that's a really, I really love that you have... Um, that you've brought up that point, Liz, because voice that, yeah. it, it is actually something that I guess we could say, um, you know, to, you know, whoever is, is coming to, to perform and, and kind of making sure that it's an etiquette thing, you know, that people, you know, make sure you do have the time. It's not just about you playing, it's, it's also about um, listening to everyone else. Um, so just to kind of come back, okay, Liz says that they have um, planned 16 with a five minute maximum. So I take that's- um, 16 players. 16 players. Um, expect no more than 12 to show. Um, and yes, it's interesting yeah. that you're mixing up the abilities. And I think that's lovely because I think that's one of the very special things about student concerts. Yeah. It's where yeah. the, the little ones get here, the ones who have been there and learning for years, and they get to see something to aspire to. So um, I think that mixed levels is, is definitely a lovely thing to do. Uh, and I think the other thing to do, um, as well as mixed levels, is to make sure you play yourself at each and every one, ideally, or the, 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 in Liz's case, it would be the tutors are also playing something. But um, yeah, always, yeah. But I, I would probably go for slightly less time. Personally, I would, I would keep the time shorter. Um, that's why people will leave, because they think they've got to see something through. Um, oh, that's part of the reason, whereas even keep it short and sweet. Um, I appreciate it might be too late by now, but short and, short and sweet really hits the spot, I find. Um, and it's so important. And this is for live things as well. So many times you go to concerts that are just far too long for everybody concerned. And it's not fair on the performers that they're at the end of a two hour concert and just everybody's lost the will to live. You know, children's concerts are Children, student concerts are student concerts and there might be some really beautiful moments but actually as a parent you're the one who invests in your child and everybody else is kind of so-so aren't they really um <laughs> am i being very harsh there but you know there is there is a lot of support i know from parents for other people but if it goes on too long then that goodwill tends to get lost and i say this as, a, as an ex-director of music having put on many concerts the aim for me was always short, always. 
And people went away really happy at the end of it. Hannah, any thoughts on that? You're have, smiling away. I have, I have a question actually about how um, people would invite applause for a live situation, mm. the different ways that you could do that. Um, it's just sort of related to Liz's point about staying till the end and appreciating every performer. Um, I'm just wondering what members' thoughts are on applause and how you can show your appreciation. Well, we've we've got some ideas for that coming up in our creative section. So it'll be interesting to see what other people are coming up with. And Julie's come up with an idea of a quiz. And again, you know, you're all getting creative with us. You know that those it's engaging people beyond the actual performance. I think, don't you? Don't you agree, Sharon? Yeah. It's not just about the playing. It's creating an event around which they want to come and stay. It is. And I love Liz's. Sorry, Sharon. Ahead, I, love Liz's comment. <laughs> I love Liz's comment that she's um, doing. She's preparing over the rainbow. Perfect song for her own performance. That's absolutely yeah. Great. That's what I did at my last one as well. To be honest. Okay, so shall we see are any questions from anybody about whole practicalities? Any anything else that people would like to know that we haven't dealt with? Um, about what's going on. Okay, so Nicola need an... is saying, I would like to know if we need a music license. Um, I can't speak from a, a, a point of expertise here. Um, to be honest, Nicola, I think that's a really good question. I would say it's a private event. Would, if, if we are doing a concert in a venue that is paying Performing Rights Society, then possibly you would be covered under that. Um, if, if that was a live venue, I would say, as, as Liz has said, because it's a private event, people are not paying for it and it's educational I would say the answer is no okay so the answer is no okay there is another one from Jenny okay so these an opening performance to guests ie extending it to relatives to grandparents no I I know personally my feeling with this is that that is where if you are doing, you know, for example, putting together uh, a set of videos, so you're collating a set of videos and you are, you know, that potentially could be set out. I mean, I know the other, the other question, again, I'm not saying that we have the answers for it, is of course the, um, is, is child safeguarding and, and protection. And, you know, this is certainly, be aware that what we're talking about here today is we're looking at solutions to the current situation. Because normally we would all be, you know, in a venue, physically there, students getting up and performing. And I'm sure that many of you are not restricting the audience there to parents. Um, that in, if you have a venue that's that's large enough that I'm sure grandparents are included. Um, I'm not so sure if Hannah or Sally have any thoughts on that. I mean, I know at this particular time, um, I know grandparents are particularly, especially those who are isolating, are particularly appreciative of being included and involved in these in in something like this because. We all know this becomes a bit of an, an, an event. Uh, Hannah, go on. I was going to say, if you're doing the pre-record, go down the pre-recorded route, um, then you will have had to at some point get recording cons consent for different situations, one of which being performances. So I think it's if, you're, if your consent that you obtained for recording purposes kind of covers you, for example, I'm thinking of my own. Mine would cover me because the situation where I, I kind of collected my videos for school and then sent them in for that for the, for the direct, assistant director of music to organise. Um, all of those students had given consent 
for that wider audience and the link was was sent to the relevant people including yeah. from parents in some yeah. situations so i think i think if your re- recording consent covers you it's, it's okay, I, I would have thought and i would have um i would say probably don't i think is is the message we're saying don't invite grandparents to a concert that includes other pupils and other students i think there's nothing to say that you can't do exactly what Hannah did, you know, the, the, the recorded performances, or encourage the parents and the pupils to actually organise their own concert to do for the grandparents because it gives yet another performance opportunity. And then they can invite exactly who they want, can't they? Mm-hmm. But, you know, get the students to write a programme, to, you know, develop three or four pieces. And maybe if you have the time, you can go along as to that as well. But it, that, that changes the whole dynamic it of it. Does. But Yeah. Yes. Liz's comment is a good one. She says she videos live concerts and sends the, the clips of specific children to the specific parents they can, um, so they can share those clips with the grandparents. And she says she wants mm. to do that again. Mm. And she's yeah. talking about not wanting unknowns online. And I completely... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very sensible. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. think that's, it's, it's, it's very true that, I mean, again, grandparents, if they're sitting through a concert, really all they're interested in is hearing their grandchildren. So it, it does, it, that definitely does make sense. But I, I, I think, Sally, actually, you've definitely hit on a solution to that there. The idea of getting them involved in setting up their own concert and inviting um, friends and relatives to that. Yeah, I'm just going to go back because I saw a question, I think, from, I don't know whether it was from Joe about still wants to know a bit more about how to stream, um, how to share recorded performances in Zoom. So um, you use the share screen um, option, Joe, and um, you would need to make sure that you're going to share the computer sound. And it also says optimize screen share for video clip. You get, I'm just going to see if I can open this up in mine. Um, I'm going to share with you our uh, YouTube channel, which of course you've all subscribed to. Um, And if you haven't, then maybe you should. (laughs) Um, So, can you all see a YouTube channel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then you would have this open so... You know, this was on my top. This YouTube channel was already there in my browser. So I've shared that. And let's just see what happens here. Are you ready? <laughs> Can you hear or not? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there we are. We're, we're sharing the performance. I'm sure you don't need to see me doing that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So... That's what. That's the way you you share. Um, the question. The thing is to sit and 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 play around. And playing around does take time. Um, but you know, try it out yourself with somebody else in another room, or put your iPad in another room, um, and and dash backwards and forwards between the two to see what what's happening and what it looks like. I did a lot of that. I don't know about anybody else, but a few weeks ago I was doing an awful lot of. What does this look like? Oh, let's go and see. Okay. So, any other questions to do with the practicalities? Anushka says you could um, do a, pr- a practice performance for grandparents and things or treat the concert as a final rehearsal for the family concert. That's a nice idea. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so there, there are lots of... Um, different options i think that you can you can take to to make this um really work um once you've done one then actually doing another one isn't quite so hard yeah so again you might just want to consider doing um one short one just as a little trial with a group of pupils who you know are very friendly yeah whether it's adults or whatever and um and and see how it works yeah, and I'm just going okay. to comment here from Joe, um, who's saying, um, so could you set it up um, a playlist of the videos um, in YouTube? And yeah, and then just where that um, rolls through. Okay. So shall we move on then to 
kind of the creative side of it. So this is much more than just a studio concert. It's, you can make it into a really, really great event. Um, shall I kick off, Sharon, and then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, as I say, I've had two of these already, and they both have a theme. So I, uh, the first one was on Good Friday. So guess what the theme was? Yes, it was chocolate. So everybody had to bring um, some chocolate to eat, or a hot chocolate with them and we drank it or ate the Easter eggs um, as the concert went on and everybody got to show their Easter eggs and I had a bit of a, vir oh I was just about to show my virtual background, I had a bit of a virtual background <laughs> because virtual backgrounds really okay, do. We um, all want to see your virtual background Sally. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, let me just see if I can find it here. So I found a special virtual background for my Easter. Let me just choose it here uh, for my Easter themed party that looked like this. You see that? Yeah. And of course, as soon as this was before they all knew about virtual backgrounds. And of course, as soon as I produced that, they went, oh, oh that's amazing. How did you do that? And then I, I trained them on how to find their virtual background. Now, you've got to be careful with virtual backgrounds. I'm sure you found out that you don't want to get them using it all the time because you can't see the piano, <laughs> I find, when, when they play. Um, but they just bring that little bit of fresh energy um, to, to, a, to a party or to an event or to a concert um, that just makes it, makes it go with a bit of a, 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 bit of a swing. And the second one I did, that was a rainbow theme. And, um, and again, I, I think I had a rainbow background or the idea of the themes is either they um, dress up. Lovely. Next one I'm going to have. Yes, Sharon, I'm going to have a pirate party next. I know. Who knows? I've been rabbiting about pirate parties for such a long time. For years. <sighs> Jonah would yes. love this. <laughs> he would love that. My son, he would love this. So, you know, everybody dresses up. And I'm talking adults as well here, really. Um, you know, we all get in the party mood and um, it just brings, you know, real, real energy and lightness and just makes it so much more. Um, so we have a pirate party and maybe I'm sure some kids would want to learn a pirate theme or, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean or those various pirate pieces. Or I tell you what, something my pupils would love to have is a Harry Potter party. I've got... Lots of them are absolutely Harry Potter fans. Have you? Yep, yeah, I've got a fair few Harry Potter fans amongst uh, my pupils too. How about you, Sam, uh, Sharon? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In fact, I taught Hermione just the other week. In other words, <laughs> one of mine came with her Hermione kit on, you know. Um, so, you know, I, I love doing things like that. And, and for, the, um, for, the, for, for these events, I think it really, really does make it all go quite with a swing. I saw that something today um, and it wasn't piano related but it was families who had taken on this challenge to dress themselves up all from head to toe in the same colour as each other. See yeah absolutely. So I thought that was that was absolute genius and you could easily use that in a concert setting get them yeah. Yeah, yeah. the group of people to dress up in the same. It is particularly exciting at this point because of course people are generally speaking not getting dressed up because they're not going anywhere so <laughs> it is actually particularly exciting it um, is. In, yeah. in in this current time that we find ourselves so um yeah i absolutely love that idea um mm. i'm just smiling here i can see a comment from joanne who says i'm dreading the creative theme okay well hopefully you're going to go away with lots of ideas because actually we've been really quite excited about this <laughs> yeah I mean, the other thing I got the pupils to do on the Good Friday and the other one, which they absolutely adored, and I know I suggested this to somebody else who's over in the Curiosity Lounge, and they said their kids absolutely adored it, and that is to bring their pet to the party and introduce their pet to everybody. Yeah? Uh, that was huge fun, um, especially as one of my families had just got a new English setter puppy that just wouldn't sit still. You know, it was just a squirmy little thing. But we all went, ah. In the appropriate way and we saw we saw a hamster and we had the gerbil and you know and they just adored it they just adored it 
They do. And they love the sharing your baking as well. I've had mornings of normal lessons where people have been very, very happy to show you what they've been making in the kitchen as well. So, um, But you see this, yeah, but you see, I haven't brought that into a party, but wouldn't that be a lovely um, addition to a party? You know, bring your cake. Yes, we're going into that one. Okay, bring your cakes to the party. <laughs> um, the other thing that I, I encouraged... You see, I've gone into calling it a party now rather than a concert, just because. <laughs> hmm, it's, it's, but it's interesting because I think there are limitations to what we can do online. You know, and we've got to accept those. So this is one way of engaging the interest and keeping people th through to the end. Because I also got, uh, I, I, I left it open and said you could come and tell a joke, you could come and do a magic trick, and we did. We had two magic tricks. We had jokes. We had um, some little stories and, stu and stuff like that, oh, as, and pictures. We had some pictures, as well as the um, as well as the playing. I love Maggie's comment. She says one of her pupils <laughs> has an ant colony, which means she starts every lesson with invasion of the ants from piano safari. Two. That is genius, and that frankly, that should stay online. <laughs> that should yes. <laughs> oh, it's genius, though. I love it. <laughs> But uh, it would never, would never happen in real life. <laughs> no. And it's all about making connections, isn't it? It's all about that connection of the ants to the invasion of the ants. And, you know, um, stuff like that. As Julia said, online opens doors to things you wouldn't normally do in person. Yeah, like bring a... And they love sharing things of their own. You know, they all love to share that sort it's of thing. Yeah. It's the ownership. Yeah. yeah. Sharon. It is. Okay. So I am going to, I'm going to share my screen because I do have all of these bits and pieces. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? I'm excited about this now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you can see that Sally has, um, we've already covered party themes. Um, and do please keep, you know, we'd, we'd love to hear your ideas. We've mentioned party themes, um, including the idea of, of pirates. Um, and actually pieces, you know, um, mm. I think that's, you know, okay, so please keep, keep these ideas coming in because look, we're just looking at the words here, engage and involve. So let's get you guys involved um, in sharing ideas. Um, bring your pet, tell a joke or perform a trick. And what I'm not going to share with you is something called the 60 second challenge. Now, uh, we've already mentioned it on this call. It was our birthday last week at the Curious Piano Teachers. We are now five, a big five. And we had three parties last, um, last Friday for our members. And I can't quite remember, Sally, where the 60 second challenge stemmed from. It certainly goes back quite a few years. Um, but the idea is you um, have a set of questions, um, fun questions. You'll see I've got a new set of examples for, for students, particularly for these, these student parties. Um, and then someone sets a timer and the idea is you have to answer as many questions as you can in 60 seconds. Now, I think actually right throughout our parties on Friday, I'm not so sure we actually got the idea because so many of what we had, um, we had Paul Harris, we had um, Pam Wedgwood, we had Graham Fitch, we had uh, Rena Eupatis, we had William Westney, we had lots of wonderful people. And I don't think we actually made it clear that the idea was you've got to get through as many questions as possible in 60 seconds. So that in itself created quite a lot of laughter, especially when Rena, who is professor at the University in Canada, said, well, you know, I'm used to giving lots of supporting answers to everything. So that was just, let's get on to the next question. This is the idea. We've got to beat the next person. So the idea is you ask questions whoops, like these. Now, these are not the questions that we asked at our birthday party, but I have had lots of fun um, creating a new set of, uh, of questions. And obviously you can, uh, you can create your own, but we will be sending uh, everyone who's registered for today's webinar, we will be sending this out to you as a PDF. Um, and do you know, I think we actually should have someone who, um, who, who does this. Is one of the two of you up for this? Okay. <laughs> okay. Sally? 
Have okay. you, yeah, have I'll, do, I'll be the timer. Yeah, I'll be the timer. Like an example. Okay, so you could just imagine. Just a minute. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just going to pick randomly, Hannah. So you do need to look particularly and study these questions before we get going. Okay, so let's see. How Are you ready? Go. Steady, go. What's your favorite food? Pizza. Uh, hum the first line of a song. <laughs> what month is your birthday? January. Uh, what is your favorite song? Oh, new radicals. You get what you give. <laughs> What's your favorite type of ice cream? Uh, pistachio. Uh, ooh, how many keys does the piano have? 88. Ask me a question. Uh, what did you have for breakfast today? Oh, toast. Uh, what book are you reading right now? Andrea Schiff, music uh, comes out of silence. <laughs> are these notes the same pitch? Do, do. Yes. Uh, what's your favorite game to play? Guess who? If you end, end, end. <laughs> I was, I was kind of counting, um, partly, part of the way through. I'm not so sure. <laughs> How did I do? Well, I was counting most of the way through, except for the end. What did you get, Sharon? I got either eleven or twelve. I yeah, I would say eleven. Let's go for eleven, shall we? Okay. Pretty, so, uh, pretty good. Lots of fun. So you get the idea. Um, you know, a huge amount of fun. You can have a mixture of just general questions in there. Um, anything that's fun, anything that's light. And it's interesting. It's what we did find at our our um, webinar. Um, birthday parties on Friday really just lightens everything everyone starts to giggle and starts to laugh um, so that's one thing that you can and possibly the idea is to you know intersperse a few of those um, as well it doesn't mean that you have to do it all all in one go um, and of course if you have if you realize oh gosh well that would be you know I've got 12 students who are going to be coming along <gasps> that's you know at least 12 plus minutes well you know you could Put it down to 30 seconds. Yeah. Um, so, okay, um, I'm going to, let me see if I just hop back and um, we can see my screen. Lots of fun that was shown. Yeah. I enjoyed that. It is amazing. <laughs> and these, of course, Sally, I'm going to get you to talk about these because this is something. Okay. I love these. So, with my with with my con, um, parties that I've had so far um, again you want to get the the audience when they're not playing engaged and involved and giving feedback to um, to the people who've performed and we've already kind of discussed the uh, reactions that you can get people to clap and of course they love just coming forward and pressing that clap or the thumbs up or whatever but I wanted them to see if they could give really positive feedback about the piece, how it made them feel. So I came up with the, the just some, some different um, emotions, really. It made me feel happy. It made me feel calm. It made me feel dreamy. And uh, there's some there at the bottom which are, are blank to encourage them to actually write on it and I would I sent all these through I've got my a few here um, I sent them all through to the parents and the parents printed them off and cut them up and then the children as they listen to each other play or the as, as the students listen to each other's performances at the end uh, they'd all do their clapping with their reactions or their emojis or whatever and then I'd say okay so think about uh, which card, you know, how did that make you feel? And I would kind of do a bit of a countdown, five, four, three, two, one, and they'd hand sh put that up to the screen like that. And of course, what the student who just played would see is all, all these cards telling them how their playing made everybody else feel. Um, and the parents were there giving guidance, you know, for, especially for the younger ones who didn't quite understand at the beginning. They 
after two or three performances, they got the idea that, you know, and this is so important, isn't it, for our younger students, older students, they need to know that music should make us feel something. It should move us. And then they can start to think about whether their music really, really does or not. So um, very much for those of you that are PTC based, you know, piano teachers course, very much safe circle um, performing. And, you know, if you've got um, a group of, of uh, teenage students you might not want to even use these you could get them to say comment on something specifically that they really enjoyed about the performance you know whether it's the rhythm whether it was the the, the dynamic shaping or you know you can make this as um, deep mm -hmm. or as easy as, as you like really Jenny Abelman's got a good suggestion here as well. She says if you have paid Zoom, you can use the polling feature as well. So totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really good idea. That yeah. is Jenny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So we've had the um, 60 second challenge. And of course, you can come up with your own questions if you want, or you can use those. We've had these performance emotion cards. Um, we've already mentioned playing something yourself. So just keep it short, you know, Liz mentioned Somewhere Over the Rainbow and that's definitely something that I played. And of course, the parents just adore that as well. And it's so good for you to show that, yes, I'm here as well. You don't want to do something long, keep it short. <laughs> that's the whole me message, isn't it? Keep it short um, and keep it relevant, um, whether that's something that they do know or something that... Um, you know is very beautiful and that they're going to really enjoy. I wouldn't go for something that's too obscure, personally. I would just keep it really, really fresh and um, uh, and, and something really appealing. Um, and the, the last thing we wanted to mention, which probably is, is a bit like the polling feature, um, is, is to do some sort of online quiz. And you could almost extend the 60 second challenge into a quiz um sharon and i again we were investigating the quiz option a few weeks ago weren't we and i did actually sign up for something called trivia maker but that's as far as it's got <laughs> sometimes there are just too many things to look at aren't there um so uh, the the but having a, a short quiz that you could use and you could run that through the event. So you you would have questions at different points during the event. And um, you could have prizes at the end. Give points and points mean prizes. And the winner would be announced at the end of the uh, event. Another reason for people staying online. Mm. Okay. Yeah, prize, prize draws can be... Um something that can, yeah, be, yeah. Uh, can be fun as well. We had one, again, to celebrate um, our birthday last week. We were giving away um, 10 of our, um, our newest online course um, called the Grade 1 Toolkit for Piano Teachers. And um, on Saturday evening, I, I realized it's that thing. Oh, I need, to, I need to, to get winners chosen. So I got my three-year-old. Um, I put the names inside a balloon and uh he he popped them popped the balloon for me um so even doing something as simple as that um it can it create you know and it, holding something off like that right to the end and go you know have a couple of balloons and go, these are going to be burst at the end and there's going to be um you know and something can be you know where you send something it can be very very cost effective very um, you know, where you just send little tiny prizes through the poster um, via an online site to, um, to students. But it can really add to the excitement. Um, I think little and, um, you know, lo lots, of, lots of tiny little ideas rather than kind of having your mm. party mm. or concert kind of lots of all of the same sort of thing. I think variety really spices things up. So if you have a little bit of the 60 second challenge, obviously maybe not necessarily everyone does it, um, and then have something else um, for, for other students. Bit of playing, you play. So I think, yeah, the more mixed up it is, the more variety, the more fun it, it will be. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I mean, absolutely, Sharon. And what you just sparked off there was, of course, you could also send invitations out. So once you've decided on the date, you know, why not? People are just loving getting things through the post again, real, real mail, you know. Put together a little postcard and just you are invited to. Um, and um, you could also sort of have a um, designer cover. You could still create a program for the party with once people have submitted what they're going to play and you could get them um, to have a designer cover and you could have a sort of a little mini competition for the cover compile it yourself that's it you know you've got to have the skills to do that clearly um uh and then you you would email that through to the parents and they could then print off the program and everybody could sit there with their shared program or maybe the kids you print off a program without a cover and they design the cover to go on the front individual covers yeah all these little, as Sharon said, little ideas, little ideas, and you don't not going to do all of them, but hopefully there's something there that sparks your imagination. Jo Snowden, yes, Joanne, she's asking about backing tracks with pupils. I have had no success with this. The pupil can be paying their backing track. I can hear them, but I can't hear the backing track. I don't know about other people. Hannah, any experience on this? I have. I've had one um, duetting along to I Love Coffee backing track, um, one of my ones just in lessons. And I think if they turned their volume up loud enough, I could hear it. Um, and I could tell when she was and wasn't in time. So it mm. was OK. I know that um, Jo Sanderson is saying that backing tracks are working well and will definitely make it more of a performance. She's also um, mentioned she's got a couple of parents who would hopefully duet with their children, which is lovely if you can get parents actually playing with them as well. But Jo Sanderson, if you can share with us how they're making it work um, with backing tracks. Is there anything special that you're asking the parents to do? That would be helpful. I think that would be great if you can pop that in the chat for us. Yeah. And thank you, Liz, for reminding us that, you know, it's about turning off the option to, mm -hmm. for background noise. Um, I, I think it is a combination of having the volume up loud enough, having that switched off and, um, yeah, and the signal being good, mm. personally. Yeah. Yes. And certainly with mine, we haven't managed to get all three things together yet. And sometimes in a lesson, you know, I think for, for a performance situation, it would probably be worth exploring that and making sure that that option is really, really working. I think sometimes I feel in a lesson, you could spend five minutes, can't you, just sorting out how to get that working. And then you kind of think, OK, that's five minutes of the lesson gone. So anyhow, I think there was one other question in the question and answers. Ah, oh, Louise says may work best if they play backing tracks sharing computer sound. Um, have people found that? Yeah. Does that work well? Do you get issues with latency there, or is it does it okay? Um, well, that's what I was just doing a few minutes ago when I was sharing the screen, and it was with computer using the computer sound. Um, I think it's just so hard to make sure that absolutely everybody has got absolutely all the all the right boxes ticked. Um, so I think you just sometimes have to have to kind of send out all the instructions, give all the help you can, and then what happens happens. You know. Jo Sanderson saying about that um, backing track comment. She's saying just play play it at loudest volume. Where the piano is digital, you can ask them to turn it down a little bit. Um, she's found that the backing track only works where the piece is really fluent already. Otherwise, it can throw the performer a little bit so yeah yeah, yeah thank yeah. you for that yeah um, i'm just going to go to a question from joe that she she left she was talking about is there a safeguarding dis difference between having grandparents at a live concert versus a zoom concert i think that's a good a good question to pose joanne I think the difference for me is I can't see the grandparents <laughs> um, in the same, well, I suppose I can because they're on a screen, but I, I just feel that they would, their behaviour I wouldn't be able to control. So it might be one thing to have them there as an audio only, but I certainly wouldn't have them there with visual. That's my immediate reaction. Sharon or? Hannah, mm. thoughts? Yeah. I think that, yeah, I think it could be. 
I think apart from anything else, when you have a lot of people on video on a Zoom call, if you're in gallery view, it can be quite distracting for the person who's kind of looking. I mean, obviously there's a, the performer is performing at that point, but um, I think, it, yes, I think it might work better to maybe just have performers on camera. Um, just thinking off the top of my head. But um, it's a good question as well from Madge mm. about how she, whether we've got any tips for adults only online concerts. Um, she's thinking of doing one for her adult students. That's another good good question. What do you think? I I I, I think you know you can you can employ the same. Obviously, you're not going to ask them to bring their pets, um, <laughs> but you could have a theme behind it. Um, you could, you know, have it at a particular time of day and whether. Uh, I'm just thinking of the Oxford Piano Group, you know, we had a meeting on a Saturday afternoon, so we're all sitting there with our cups of teas and, and cakes and things. Um, uh, so have a theme. You could try the 60-second challenge, you know. Are they, are they up for it? Because they'll all be a bit nervous. And what you want to do is relax them, I think, don't you, really? Yeah. Um, and, Sharon? La yeah, and, and, and a bit of laughter, generally. <laughs> Uh, is 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 very good you know it's it's just proof that people are having a great time um, I mean I was I was literally with the 60 second challenge on Friday evening I was literally I was crying <laughs> I was laughing about it. <laughs> I have to uh, say I yeah Adults only with cheese and wine, yes. I, I come off these calls that we do here. And when I go out last week, one day last week, my husband said, what do you do on there? You just seem to laugh a lot. <laughs> so I think lots we do. of fun is good. Lots of fun is good. Um, it, it is, it is. I mean, I think there's probably ideas um, for uh, something we did put up inside the latest curiosity box. Now, obviously, this is only available to people who are members, although we should be telling everyone else, we will be telling everyone else about um, oh, yeah. the, um, the opportunity that you have to join the membership for, um, for free for one, month, for one month. And inside there, I'm just thinking, inside the current curiosity box, there are 12 ideas for online lessons. And actually there's a couple of ideas I'm just thinking that would probably work in um, a concert and party situation as well. Um, I mean, I'm just thinking, Sally, um, there's the one where you can put, um, you know, you, the, the teacher plays something, you know, whether it's in duple meter or triple meter or quadruple meter, and people come armed with at least four different household things. So it could be, you know, um, four toilet rolls. And if Sally plays something, or if the teacher plays something in a, a triple meter, then you've got to set three objects out. So, you know, that would be quite a fun, again, yeah. it's, it's actually having tactile things. So, um, I'm just going to share my screen um, because I know there will be quite a few of you on here who are probably already members. I'm, I know I'm recognizing lots of names, but if you are not yet, whoops, I need to go. Okay, Sally, I'm going to pass over to you to do the talking for a minute whilst I just see where my screen has gone to. Okay, okay. So um, just just going down here and great that you love all those ideas, Nicola, and I think, yep, an informal concert is, is a good way of thinking about it. Um, Joanne is saying she's got four adult students, um, be absolute beginners. So don't get them to perform. Don't, don't, don't actually frame it as a performance just frame it as a as, as a get together as an event um you know put put a theme or maybe introduce them to a particular composer and put it 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 all depends i think on how you frame it and um and invite them you know that they could play a piece to each other if they wanted and especially if you can get them to do positive feedback i mean they might not uh you might not want to do these little cards like that, but you could get them to think about the different musical aspects and come up with their own words. Or you might want to just give them, um, you know, some ideas. I mean, I think the place to look for this is the Musical Adjectives Project, which has got wonderful, wonderful words out there that um, can really spark off ideas. So if you're, if you're sort of thinking, oh, I, I run out of words, which we all do, but you know, just, just go and look at something like that to help people get creative. Right, Sharon, over to you again. 
Okay, so um, just to say that there is, we are currently offering um, a free membership trial uh, for those of you who this may be your first encounter with the Curious Piano Teachers. Um, what we mainly do is we run an online membership site, which is where um, hundreds of piano teachers from around the world um, congregate. We have um, a, a wonderful Facebook group uh, where members, and certainly at this particular time, there have been lots of amazing chat and lots of incredible support. Uh, we've also been doing community chats, which is where Sally and I and Hannah, we all come on every Tuesday evening and every Friday morning and we just hang out. We, we just, it's been very much the new going out for us at this time. And um, we just <laughs> share. Uh, so there is access to, I mean, people have in, in the past referred to it like a staff room. It's just where you've got a lot of <laughs> wonderful piano teachers all hanging out, helping one another, sharing ideas. Um, you can, you know, post and ask for, for help and advice. Um, then there's also access to uh, a membership site and that's where we have all the goodies. So with the free access, you get 100% um, 100% access to all the membership resources. We have something called Curiosity Boxes, and that is where every single month we have a different topic. Now the past two months, um, April and May, we have dedicated to a box called um, Teaching Piano Online. So it's where the resource I was talking about just a few moments ago, where there are 12 um, ideas for online lessons. Um, complete with videos, you get access to that. So there's a huge amount of stuff in there, kind of everything from um, ideas and resources for teaching beginners right the way through to advanced level on topics, right, everything literally under the sun. I know we, we keep finding things, little gaps and little holes that we keep plugging, um, but you know, from teaching pedaling, um, teaching rote, and we've also, it's not just uh, Sally and I, who are delivering the content, we have um, very wonderful and special people from all around the world. Um, the likes of William Westney, for those of you who have ever read the, his wonderful book, The Perfect Wrong Note. Um, Lucinda Mathworth Young. Uh, oh, I could go on and on. Anyway, it's free. Graham. Go over Graham there. Fitch. Graham Fitch. Um, Samantha Coates, Elisa Milne, Pamela Wedgwood, uh, Andrew Higgins. Okay, so you to and if you're if you're not yet a member, hop over there and you can try it all out for one month for free. And mm -hmm. the link is there, the curious pianoteachers.org forward slash join. And do make sure though you put in there is a place, a little box for the coupon code. Make sure you type free support into that and that will enable you to experience the, the membership of the community of the curious piano teachers for uh for a month and i think it's worth saying sharon that you know the next box is due out on monday isn't it june the first and this is all about building the resilient piano studio so this is about us all looking ahead and actually you know the the future we might come out of lockdown hopefully at some point but we know that there's going to be a big impact on the world economy so it's a question of making sure that your studio is ready for that and that you have built the the the, the most resilient piano studio that you possibly can so we're looking at ideas of how we're going to do that together okay yes, i'm just going Lovely. to follow up just with uh, anushka who said Sally's beautiful ready to play books um, could be used for ice breaking and fun activities. I completely agree. Sally, do you I'm know? glad you mentioned that. Hmm? Do I what? Books there. I do, you know, they just live up here. And, and it's really, really, really exciting. I'm not sure I should be saying this, but we've just been talking about um, they're going to be available in the States fairly soon. So we've just been re, um, redoing them with American terminology, which is really very, very exciting. And I'm glad you mentioned that, actually, because that is something else I will do at these events. I will tend to do not necessarily songs, although sometimes they do that, but, but games um, or um, action rhymes. You know, I, I, I think I did on the first one, say boom, chicka boom, say boom, 
teacher people and they all had to kind of answer back um which because it's a call and response it does just about work online okay so i think we've covered rather a lot now but hannah go on I was going to say, um, Sharon's asking, um, she's in the middle of the webinar, could we do replay? There will be a replay posted up to the Curious Piano Teachers YouTube channel, so do make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to that because um, yeah. you'll find not just this, but lots of fantastic stuff on there. Yeah, I, I keep trying to say... to say to people... Sorry, go ahead, Sally. I was just going to say, we're going to go, we're trying to get up to a thousand subscribers because that kind of opens all sorts of um, magic doors for us. So please, 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 if you haven't, just go over there now and subscribe. Then you get to hear all the latest bits and bobs that go up. Sharon. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So no, all I was just going to say was, um, but we will, if you've, um, as everyone who is on here has uh, registered for this webinar, for everyone who's registered, we will also be sending you an email um, with the replay and also with um, the uh, performance emotion cards and the uh, examples that you can use for the 60 second challenge as well. So you will get those as downloadable PDFs. Fantastic. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Sally. That's been absolutely brilliant. Loads of fantastic ideas, as always. Um, I hope you've all, everyone who's joined us has found that really helpful. Um, do hop in, have a look at using some of those and share if you're a member of our community already please do hop in and share how you're using these great ideas in your own teaching in your own recitals because we love to hear how they're being used in practice so thank you for being with us this afternoon and thank you both ladies thank it's you. our pleasure it's been... thank you hannah for coming and it's great that you've all uh, um <laughs> the tremendous trio I like that i like that that Thanks seems so like a good way to finish <laughs> Okay, happy teaching everybody. Absolutely. Bye. Bye-bye. See you. Bye.